In this screencast we're going to demonstrate uh, what was discussed previously about moving the uh, instance of the configuration for a standalone server out from underneath the JBoss home folder. Uh, to do that we need to pick a suitable configuration. Uh, in this case um, we'll use the existing configuration for standalone. Um, generally speaking you need to select the configuration directory probably the deployments directory and the lib directory although if you don't have any deployments or any additional libraries those aren't strictly speaking necessary but um, usually it's good practice to select them. We'll copy them and put them into a folder of their own. I created my EAP for that purpose so we'll paste them into here. Now um, to show that they are in fact um, that this is a configuration that is um, different. What I'll do is modify the configuration file and update the ports so that the server starts on a, a new set of ports um, and to do that what I'll do is I'll increase the port offset by 10,000. What this essentially does is adds a well, adds 10,000 to each of the default port numbers here for this server instance when it starts up. So for instance the default port number for um, the HTTP listener will be on uh, 18080 when the server starts up without explicitly having to change them. 10,000 will get added to each of these. So if we save that change we can then go and launch our server instance that has that change in it. To do that from the JBoss EAP bin directory we would run the standalone script and pass in the JBoss server base dir setting with the appropriate new reference to the base dir that um, the configuration file is sitting in um, which represents this value that you see here. Um, of course uh, in our previous discussion I mentioned that you could put this into the JBo uh, into the standalone.conf file uh, but you do have the choice of putting it into the command line as well if this is a one-off change or an infrequent change that you expect to do. Certainly because we're demonstrating here it's just as easy to pass it in as a command line switch. So if we press enter that should launch our instance as a um, new configuration that started in 3.76 seconds. Um, to prove that that started and is listening on a different set of ports we should be able to still start up the original server instance that is still in the JBoss base directory and that starts up fine in roughly the same time and of course uh, we could also go to the um, browser instance and point our um, browser at localhost 18080 for the new instance that I created and you can see that that's uh, running fine as well as launch the original browser um, the, the start page or the welcome page for the browser that's listing on listening on port 8080 and you can see that that's running as well. So that basically um, proves that we have both servers listening there. Of course you can um, choose to fire up the administration console for either of these two servers and if I open a new tab here and go to the local host 1880, 1080 um, I could jump to the administration page on that one as well. Um, so you can see that we've got two separate sets of administration pages that we can use to administer each server as an independent instance. Um, the other thing that's probably worth um, just showing you to verify that um, things happened as we expected, the data, temp and log directories were all created as part of starting up this new EAP instance which uh, we indicated was what would happen if you did that. Um, we 
don't have any deployments at this stage to show you, but uh, I could independently deploy against each of these servers as well now. Alright, that ends our demonstration and in the next set of screencasts we'll move on to looking at the standalone.xml file and its general configuration layout.